Want to speak real French from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at FrenchPod101.com. Hey everyone, it's Pierre from France and welcome back for more videos on French. Today's videos will be about 10 common mistakes that French learners make often in French. So, I'm gonna explain 10 different points and let's get started without further ado. The three first points are really easy, like a simple explanation will be enough to make you understand the mistake and I hope with this you will not make this mistake anymore. So first of all, rendre visite à. This is a translation for the verb in English, to visit. There is two ways to translate to visit in French. First, when you visit a place, like I visit France, I visit France, you use the verb visiter. Je visite la France. The verb visiter. Je visite la France. I visit France. So this is kind of easy. Same verb, like it's not a false friend. But when you visit someone's place, this is more complicated. But not really complicated. Because you just use this expression, rendre visite à. So instead of using the verb visiter, you use rendre visite à. Rendre visite à. I visit my grandmother. Je rends visite à ma grand-mère. So it's like exactly the same sentence, except that you have to use rendre visite à. So here I conjugate it. So rendre, rend, je rends, je rends visite à. So kind of easy. You just need to remember that visit is different when you visit someone's place. Je rends visite à ma grand-mère. So this one is kind of easy. Let's move on to another one, which is kind of confusing, but really easy to solve it. Tu me manques. It means I miss you. So here you can say that I is a subject in English, but in French it's tu, which is like you. But here, you have to use uh, me to translate the I. So here there is a kind of inversion. The subject is the object. And the object is a pronoun. So here, I miss you. Tu me manques. So this is the case for all the situations. So if you want to say we miss them, you have to say Il nous manque. Il nous manque. So here, as you can see, um, the subject is il, like them. It, it becomes the subject. So be careful not to confuse and to use uh, nous as the subject and il as the pronoun. This is kind of confusing, but if you know the rule, you will be able to, to do no mistakes with this. So the next one is something that you learn quite early when you learn French, but it's an easy rule to forget. It concerns capital letters. In French, we don't use capital letters with nationality, weekdays, and months. So you just remember this with, with the nationality, weekdays, and months. So here, for example, when you want to say French people in French, French people, you have to use les in French. So les Français, it's like French people, but here you don't use any capital letter. In French, a capital letter, you use the, the noun for capital letter is majuscule. Majuscule. So here, no majuscule, no capital letter. Then for weekdays, it's the same like Monday, lundi, le lundi. You don't put any capital letter, no majuscule, just a simple letter. Same for months. Here, like May, le mois de May, the months of May. Here, you, as you can see, no capital letter. So this is kind of easy, not a big mistake if you do it, but just remember that it would make you sound, or maybe when you write, you will look more native. So this is not like uh, something that you say, but something that you write. Okay, let's move on to the next one, the fourth one. So here, it concerns contractions. Although I think it's something that you learn quite early in French, this is something that is often forgotten by uh, French learners. 
So I'm gonna explain this once again. First, this one, de le. In French, we don't say de le. We do a kind of contractions, which is kind of weird. So here, you take the D and yet you add a new, a U. So du. So de le, you never say de le, you say du. So this is for the masculine form, but you know the feminine form de, of de le is de la. So here, if you want to say some jam, jam in French, confiture, confiture, it's a feminine noun. So here, if you want to say, ah, I want some jam or I want jam, je veux de la confiture, de la confiture, feminine, so de la, de la. But if the word is masculine, like bread, for example, it's a masculine word, you have to use de le, but no, it's forbidden. You have to do the contractions. This is forbidden. You do the contractions, so you say du pain. Du pain. So this one is uh, kind of weird. Why there is a U, we don't know. But you have to remember that. You never say de le, but du. Okay? Next one um, is kind of easy. It's just like when you use le, de, or que, and then there is a vowel. Since it's quite hard to say the, this i with the vowel that is next to this word, you do a contraction, so you get rid of the i and you add this to shorten your word. So here, like elephant, so in French, elephant start with a vowel, an i. So this is a noun and this is a masculine noun, so le, but here, you get rid of the E, because there is this vowel. Same with de, here, il vient d'arrêter. Like, venir de, vient de, it's like a common expression in French, you say, oh, I just stop, I just stopped. So here, il vient d'arrêter, il vient d'arrêter, it means I just stopped. So here, there is de, il vient de, and then you add a verb, the, the expression is like that, you always add a verb after de, but here, since the verb starts with the vowel, a, you have to do the contractions. So here, elle, il vient d'arrêter. If you want to use like a verb that is not starting with a vowel, il vient de commencer, he just started. Il vient de commencer, you hear de, but here, il vient d'arrêter. There is the contraction because there is a vowel. And this, this one is often forgotten. I think this is the most problematic one because here uh, it's not often that you do the contractions because it's not common that there is Q and, and then a vowel. But this is still occurring when you do like sentences that start with il dit que, like uh, he said that or stuff like that. Here, if the subject is il or l, you have to do the contractions. So, she, he said that he's here. Il dit qu'il est là. You don't say il dit que il est là. You have to say il dit qu'il est là. He said that he is here. Il dit qu'il est là. Same with l. Il dit qu'elle est là. He's saying that she is here. Here in French, you have to do the contractions. So don't forget this. This is kind of important. So let's sum it up. Contractions. Le, de, que. You get rid of the E when there is a vowel. Like it's always with the E. Always with the E. So it's quite easy with the vowel. And you just get rid of the E and you add this instead. Remember, this one, que, is really important. Don't forget. And also, this one, de le, you don't say it, never, you always say du. So here, you know, all the rules. Maybe you knew it before, but it's a kind of like, uh, I'm just refreshing your, your mind. So yeah, remember this. Next one is kind of tricky. Ma, you know, ma, it's like a translation for my. Ma, you can translate it into two different words in French. Ma and mon. Here, like it's a feminine form and here it's the masculine form. You know, nouns in French have genders. 
And depending on the gender of the, the thing, you have to translate my in one of the, these two cases. That there is one cases where one case where you don't do the the common rule. You don't check the the gender of the noun. It's when there is a vowel and when the word is feminine. So when it's feminine and when it starts with a vowel, so you can say that whenever a word starts, a noun starts with a vowel, you have to use mu. This is kind of confusing. When you say mon ami, like my friend, in French you can say my friend, like my my friend if she is a boy or she is a, if, if he is a boy or or she is a girl if she is a girl. So here it's a boy, so mon ami. But if she is a girl, you add the e here, and you could think, okay, I have to use ma. But that's not the case, because as, as, as I said, here there is a vowel, so you have to say mon, mon ami, and don't forget to do the liaison, mon ami, because there is this vowel, and here also you do the liaison, of course. So here, mon ami, mon ami, so you cannot make the distinction, uh, like when you just speak, this is the same pronunciation either if it's a boy or a girl but when you write it there is this e to that helps you to make the the disambiguation but here uh, it's the same word so let's get uh, further with another example when you say une affiche une affiche like a poster this means poster and this is a feminine noun affiche feminine so you say une affiche. But you can also say my poster or your poster or his poster. Because in French, this rule is not only for ma, but it's also for ta and sa. So my, you, and his or her. So here, if you want to say one of these with affiche, you have to say mon, ton, son. Mon affiche, son affiche, ton affiche. So here, even though affiche is a feminine word, you have to use the masculine word here, mon, ton, son. So this is just because there is a vowel. So just remember that ma or ta or even sa, when there is a vowel after, you don't think of the gender, you just use mon or ton or son so this is kind of easy vowel always the same and you do the liaison always do the liaison but it's not only for noun it's also working with adjectives so here here is an interesting example sa découverte découverte like it means discovery sa découverte is it means like his or her discovery here, découverte, it's a feminine word in French. Discovery is feminine. No reason for that. So here, sa découverte, you use sa. Why? Easy, because there is like a consonant and this is a feminine word. So no reason to use something else, sa. But if you want to add an adjective like incredible, incroyable, incroyable, you want to add this adjective here between sa and découverte. But now, if you do this, you've got a vowel. So you have to do again son. You have to use son instead of sa, even though découverte is feminine. Son, une incroyable découverte. So again, it's not only with noun, it's also with adjectives. It's like for any kind of thing that you can that you can have. So if you have ma, ta, or sa, and a vowel, even though it's a noun or an adjective, you just turn it into a mon, son, or ton, and you don't forget to do the liaison. So this is kind of confusing, especially since in English you have the distinction between his and her, but in French we don't do this, because we don't care 
of the owner of the object. We just care about the object, if the gender of the object. So here, don't forget to think of the gender of the object and just check if there is a vowel. So the gender of the object and if there is a vowel. Next one, pronominal verbs and possessive pronouns. This one, I hear this a lot, even though the um, like French learners are really good at French, this mistake is quite uh, a big one. Uh, like, it's not that that problematic, but if you hear it, like it sounds a bit weird. And I think it's something that you don't learn at school. So when you want to use a verb, like, I'm washing my hands. I'm washing my hands. When you do actions uh, with your body in French, usually you have uh, you use a verb that is a pronominal verb. Je me lave les mains. So here, je me lave. I wash my hand. I'm washing my hands. Here, in English, you say I wash my hands. My, because it's my hands. But here in French, since you have me already, you have to use les and not my. Like, if you say, je me lave mes mains, it sounds weird, because there is me and me, so you're saying twice, like you're referring twice at yourself, and just once is enough. Je me lave les mains. So, usually I hear a lot of uh, French learners saying, je me lave mes mains, but you say, je me lave les mains. It's the same for any other pronominal verbs. If you say, il s'est cassé, like he broke, he, he he broke his leg, or she broke her leg. Il s'est cassé les jambes, or la jambe here. Um, so here, same here. If you want to say. He broke his leg, or she broke her leg. You have to say, il s'est cassé la jambe. You don't say, il s'est cassé sa jambe. You have to say, il s'est cassé la jambe. Because here, there is already this that is referring to his leg. So here, il s'est cassé la jambe. So be careful with that. There are many verbs, and usually it's verbs that are referring to your body, like when you like, uh, brush your teeth. In French, say it's se brosser les dents. So this is the infinitive form. So if you want to use like with je, je me brosse les dents. Je me brosse les dents. I'm washing my, I'm brushing my teeth. I'm brushing my teeth. So here, again, les. Same with like, uh, se coiffer les cheveux, je me coiffe les cheveux, je me coiffe les cheveux. Here I'm not saying mes cheveux, I'm saying les cheveux. I'm brushing uh, my hair. So here, se coiffer les cheveux. Se coiffer les cheveux. So be careful with that. It's usually verbs with body, with the body, but it's always the case with pronominal verbs. So be careful. Let's now move on to the next one. This one is also something really common and a kind of weird in French. It's like when you want to introduce someone, you don't use il est, but you introduce the person with c'est. Because you know, usually you translate he with il, she with elle, or it with ça, or si with uh, this contraction. But if you want to introduce someone, like my friend, you don't say, you don't, because in English you can say, he is my friend, or it is my friend. But in French, this is, there is only one way to translate the two sentences. He is my friend, or it is my friend, just one way to translate it. C'est. You have to say, c'est mon ami. You cannot translate, he is my friend, with il here. And when you introduce someone, you always have to use c'est. Like, it's the same if you want to introduce, I don't know, your French teacher. Like, he is my French teacher, or it is my French teacher. In French, just one way to translate it, 
c'est le professeur de français. Or, it's, c'est mon professeur de français. C'est le professeur de français means uh, he is the French teacher or it is the French teacher, but in French, only one way to translate it. C'est, to introduce someone, c'est. Always c'est. Just remember that. Let's move on to the next one with this letter that is an, uh, an, um, a word in French. Why? To replace a place. Because you know, you can replace a noun sometimes by using it in, uh, in English. Like, I'm using a tool, I'm using it. It's the same in French, but you can also do that with, uh, for places. So if you want to say uh, je suis en France, but you want to, you know that you don't want to repeat the word en France because it's the location. In English, you can also do, uh, you can avoid the repetition, the repetition by using I am there. But in French, you have to use this word, why. So here you say j'y suis, j'y suis. And please note that here, uh, when you see je suis en France, like the place is after the verb, but when you do um, like the substitution, the y is before the verb. J'y suis. And since and since y is a vowel, you have to to translate. Uh, you have to do the contraction, like here. Je becomes j. J. Je becomes j because there is a vowel. So j'y suis. I think this is kind of confusing when you hear this because you're wondering like what like why did they say j? But it's, it means like he is referring to a place. So same here is another example like uh, she is walking uh, her dog like to in a park or something like that. Elle promène son chien au parc. Elle promène son chien au parc. So here you have to say, if you want to not, like, if you want not to repeat au parc, which is the location, like park, it is like, same in French, parc, elle y promène son chien. So here again, this is after the verb, like it's at the end of the sentence, but here, when you do the, like, you avoid the repetition, the repetition, you have to use why? Before the verb, elle promène son chien au parc, elle y promène son chien. So here, be careful, before the verb. So this is how you replace, um, like, uh, a place in French. But you can also replace a thing. And sometimes, in French, it's not enough to use just ça. Because in English, like, as I said, you can, like, I'm using, um, you can say, I'm using a tool. I'm using it. J'utilise un outil. Je l'utilise. In French, here, it's like kind of similar. Um, instead of saying l'outil, which is the tool, I'm saying le, je l'utilise. But this is not the case when you want to replace a thing that is introduced with A, with this, A, O, O, or de, D, or D. Here, if it's a, o, o, you have to use instead of le, or la, or le, if it's plural, you have to use again y. So y is like to replace a place, or to replace a thing introduced by a, o, o. So if you want to say, je pense à mon avenir, like I'm thinking about my future, if you want to replace à mon avenir, like you don't want to repeat it, you have to say, j'y pense. Again, here after the verb, here before the verb. It's always like that in French. It's the same when you say, like, I'm using a tool, I'm using it. J'utilise un outil, je l'utilise. So here, again, you always do, when you replace a noun, you always do the inversion. You put it before the verb. So here, there is a. So you don't use le, because mon avenir, it's like, um, a masculine word but here since there is a you don't care if it's masculine or feminine because you don't have to use le you have to use why so j'y pense 
and this is different when there is de, de or de, you have to use en. So if you want to say je veux du pain, you don't say like when you say je veux du pain, it means I want bread or I want some bread. Je veux du pain. Je veux du pain. Jean veut. Jean veut. Here again, before the verb, you use this, and since there is a vowel, you do the contraction. Only with je. Like if it's tu, you don't do it. Tu en veux. Tu veux du pain. Tu en veux. So here, um, you don't say je veux du pain. Je le veux. You don't say this. Because here there is de or du, like I forgot, but here it's not only with de, de or de, it's also with du. Je veux du pain. J'en veux. You don't say je le veux, you say j'en veux. Because it's du pain. And uh, here you have to be careful because it's only concerning things. So if you want to use like the same verb, je pense, à mon avenir, but you're thinking about someone here. You want to say, je pense à Pierre. But Pierre, it's a noun, it's my, it's my, it's a name, it's my name. Je pense à Pierre. Je pense à lui. Here, since Pierre is like a name, a person, you cannot replace it with, um, so, à, uh, with, with Y. You have just to replace it, like with the, the corresponding word. So here, since Pierre is a boy, you have to say lui. And je parle de Marie. So here again, like it's an example with de. Je parle de Marie. You don't use en, since Marie is a name, a person. So you say, je pense, je parle d'elle. So here I, you do the contraction because elle is feminine. So be careful because it's not concerning uh, people. It's only with things. So let's just wrap it up for this. Why? You can use it to replace a place or a thing, but only a thing introduced by a, o, o. And when you do the replacement, you do it before, you put it before the verb. With uh, en, it used to replace a thing again, but only when it's introduced by de, de, de or du. And when you want to replace something that is not introduced by a, or de, like one of these or one of these, you use you just use le, la, or les, which is um, which is the classic one. But be careful with persons; you don't use those rules. Now let's move on to the last one. The last one is like a kind of tricky one, and I think like not a lot of people are aware of that and again it's like for the, the the capital letters it's not something that you say but it's something that you write especially when you write emails in french the there is two symbols here like the exclamative like the exclamation mark and the question marks the question mark here in english when you put the like a, a word here you don't put any space between the word and the mark. Like, hi or what. But in French, when you write it, you have to use a space. You have to put a space here. Hey, if you don't say, huh? Like, what? What? Huh? In French, there is a space here. So just be careful with that. Uh, if you write an email or if you write French, uh, especially when you're using a computer, because it's not something that you can write. Uh, like here, I put a big space, but like it's not something that you can distinguish easily. So be careful with that. Uh, it's like a kind of uh, bonus, because uh, usually it's not really bad if you do this mistake, but it's good to know it. Like you will maybe understand if some French people send you emails and they're putting spaces everywhere after the, their marks. It's because in French, you do that. Okay, so now we've seen 10 common mistakes. Here are some easy ones, like two common expressions. This rule about capital letters, nationality, weekdays, and months. Then some like classic contractions, really important, but often forgotten. Here, this tricky rule with 
matassa plus a vowel that turns into like mon ton son. Then pronominal verbs and possessive pronouns when you using like pronominal verbs so se laver like especially when you dealing with your body you have to avoid referring to twice at your own body and your own like at yourself or at like twice at uh, your like the person you're talking to you don't refer it twice here just the pronoun verbs is taking the 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 form of the subject then this is uh, like set when you introduce someone. When you introduce someone, don't use il est or elle est, even though if it's a girl or a boy, you just use set always. Like, he is my friend, always, c'est mon ami. You don't think any, any of anything else. Uh, this is only what you have to remember. And then there is to replace a place or replace a thing, i or en. Depending on the situation, so be careful with that. And then this little trick with the space when you use marks. So I know that there are a lot of common mistakes. Usually you also have the liaison or uh, like the false friends. But since I did some videos on that before, I'm not uh, mentioning that again. So I guess that's all for today. I hope you really enjoyed the video and if you really like it, you can uh, click on the like button and subscribe to our channel. And if you want to say something, you can use the comment sections down below. And if you really want to learn more French, you can visit our website, frenchpod101.com. This is a really good website to get more resources and improve your French. So I hope you enjoyed this video and see you next time. Thank you.